Hello, my name is Karma. I'm a freelance uh, web developer. And today I'll talk about coding standards and why they're worth your while. Uh, before I start, though, I would like to ask if there's any freelancers here. Quite a few. Yes. Are you using uh, coding standards at all at the moment for your own projects? So, yes or no? Okay. And everybody else who is not a freelancer, are you using coding standards uh, for your teamwork, perhaps? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Well, uh, basically, uh, that was my understanding of coding standards. And basically, they are useful for teamwork, especially, uh, but not so much if you're working by yourself. Um, sorry, it's going to. Come on. Sorry. So we are going to talk about what they are, uh, what the workers' coding standards say, how to add them to your workflow, and what will you gain by doing so. Um, as I said, I'm self-employed. We all know that gives you a lot of flexibility. Uh, but also, there's a lot of things that you need to fit into a 24 hour day. And sometimes you end up feeling like this. You've got to do your client work. You've got to have enough time to keep up with new technology. You need to have find time for networking, for uh, staying in touch with the community. And basically, at the end, you end up having to prioritize. And that is what I had done for a long time. I knew what coding standards were. Uh, more or less a happy general idea of them, but there are always other more important things I, I felt I needed to do with my time. Until one day, I decided to look into them in more detail, and I found out that my assumption of coding standards mainly useful only for teams was actually not right. And, and here, I just want to tell you what I found out. So let's start from the beginning. Coding standards, what, what are they? It's not that easy to find a definition online. And the best I could find is this from Wikipedia. You don't try to read it. So too much text. I've just highlighted the, the keywords. So coding standards are basically conventions and guidelines to help you improve the quality of your code. And by improving the readability and therefore also making it more maintainable. And that is done with recommendations about indentation, white space, naming conventions, but also adding comments to make it to document the code uh, within the code itself and recommending best practices. Okay. Um, Many companies use um, coding standards and platforms. So these are just some examples. They, they have published them online and you can find them uh, easily. Um, but because I work mostly with WordPress, then I just decide to go with WordPress coding standards. Basically. What do the WordPress coding standards say? Um, you can find all the details in the developer co uh, handbook or on GitHub. Uh, but basically, they cover the languages that WordPress uses. All of these PHP, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and accessibility is, uh, they're not incorporated into the coding standards, but they're recommended guidelines. I'll give you some examples of each. Uh, general guidelines, for example, here are examples of how to use indentation. So use tabs at the beginning of the line and spaces for alignment in the middle. Uh, another example would be 
when mm -hmm. that space it out. So basically, add spaces nearly everywhere on either side of brackets, uh, on either side of uh, negation, conditionals, equals, etc., etc. There are exceptions, but I'm not going to go into that. Just you can find it online. All the other conditions that are quite fun are basically uh, they call the other conditions because you write it the opposite way that you would say. So you would say, if the variable equals 5, then do this and that. But with Yoda, you put the value first and then the variable. And that is to avoid if you typing quickly and you're missing an equal or two equals in this case, you may end up changing the value of the variable by mistake. So it's just an, a best practice. This is a good example. Uh, what do PHP coding standards say? So, uh, naming conventions is an example. So, use underscores for variables and functions, and use dashes for file names. And an important one is annotation and validation. So, every input from the front end needs to be uh, validated before being stored into the database. And the other way around, when you get things out of the database to show in the front end, you need to make sure that they haven't got corrupted in between. These are just some examples, just checking if the value is an integer, um, removing any HTML that shouldn't be there, and just checking that the value is an email and removing um, any characters that shouldn't be there. These are examples. You can find this a uh, huge amount of functions, uh, and you can find them on the code in the codex. JavaScript. JavaScript again, maybe conventions. So instead of underscores, we use camel case for variables and functions, except constructors. Uh, best practices: all the variables should be declared at the top of the scope. Uh, use uh, three equals instead of two, use curly brackets. Um, this sounds a bit old fashioned, but that's what the WordPress coding standards say. Um, there's a lot more. HTML and CSS, there's not a lot for, for them, but it's basically just common sense. Use tabs for indentation to show hierarchy and everything lowercase, and the CSS just paste the properties one per line, and the same with the elements. Um, accessibility, as I said, they're not in the coding standards, as far as I know, but um, they're just guidelines that are quite straightforward and common sense to follow. Use semantic HTML, follow the heading hierarchy, and then skip to content links and screen to the text for uh, when you have links that are only an image. So these are just a small sample. There seems to be a huge amount to remember, but there's, there's no need to remember any of this because there are tools that help you. And we're going to look at some of them in action now. Let's see if I can manage to do this. Okay. Right. So here I've got uh, three sample files. Um, one PHP, one JS, and uh, and one style sheet, and I've got some errors uh, in them that I just want to show you. Um, what comes up? Okay, first of all, we look at the 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 PHP file. This is just taken from the codex. It's just a function. Uh, that will add the style sheet for a, a child thing. Okay, it's copy and paste it from the codex. And it works, but when we put it through the coding standards, 
check that. So we've got this thing called uh, PHP code sniffer. It comes up with 10 errors. Okay, so this is what you get. So here you have the line number, then it tells you what is wrong. And there's some of them that have a clause. If you see here, it says six smart sniff violations can be fixed automatically, right? These are the ones that can be fixed, could be fixed automatically. What type of errors do we have? Okay, if you see the ones that can be fixed automatically are to do with indentation and spacing, then we've got other things here like uh, version not set in the queue style. This means new versions of the style will not always be loaded due to browser caching. So it's quite useful because it gives you an, an idea of what you could change to make it better. So the code works, but if we look at the, um, at the function that's in line uh, 13, is this bit here, and queue style. So we have what is the file that we need to enqueue, but we don't have the version, okay? And that means if there was a new version of the parent theme, um, it wouldn't be loaded into the cache when we are updating. We may not want that to happen, but at least we now are aware that we could do something better, okay? If we wanted to fix it, there is another command called uh, code PHP code beautifier fixer. Okay, that basically is telling which standard you want to use, which file you want to fix. And if you don't want the file to be overwritten, you add this option here that will create another file. Okay, and it says here, so six errors were fixed. Okay, if we look at it, we would see that it's basically the indentation on the spaces that have been fixed. Right. Uh, now, uh, the JS, the JS file, I've got this file here, it's just taken from one of these sample interview questions and I've added some extra errors here. Just a bit of code there that doesn't do anything. The file works is when I say errors, I don't mean errors that will break the file, but errors related to coding standards. So here we see that the file actually works. Okay, it's not a, a breaking error. It's a coding standard there. Okay. Um, uh, if we look at what the coding standards say about these files, 25 errors. Wow. A lot of them, spaces, some the other uh, quotes, so must have used um, single quotes and sort of double or the other way around, if I remember. And then it says here, 22 errors fixable. Okay. But it doesn't actually tell us which ones. The, the PHP um, code sniffer told us which ones. This one doesn't. Okay. So if, if we wanted to find out exactly uh, which errors could be fixed, we could do a dry run. So basically we run the same command, but with the dry run option, and these are the ones that couldn't be fixed, so that means that everything else can be automatically fixed. If we wanted to, if we were happy with this, then we could do the proper run without the, just with a dash dash fix. Okay, right, and now for style CSS. Um, for style CSS, we've got, uh, a very simple file, everything in one line, so that's going to give us uh, some errors there. And the command 
to check that is this one style link again like uh, the javascript one it gives us the file number and it gives us the description of the error it, this one doesn't actually even give us a count of errors or if there's any which can be automatically fixed so we would have to just go for it with this command. Okay, and so basically it's fixed everything except one. And if we look at it now, uh, basically the only thing I didn't fix is separate these two into these separate ones. Okay, so um, so that's it for the command line. It, obviously, this is not very really useful if you're writing code from scratch. This will only be useful if you have something that you want to you already written and you want to check what what it's like. So, in in the case of um, if you're writing code from scratch, then you would need to add these tools to the editor. And I've got oops, I use Atom. But the same will exist for whichever the editor you use. Um, here we can see what it looks like. Every line that has an error will have a red dot. If we hover our mouse on it, it will give us, this is the JS, a message explaining what the error is. And this is very useful, you can just fix one at a time by clicking the fix button or if you want to find out more about the, about the error you will click on this link here and it opens a website oh looks like I'm not connected to Google it gives you an explanation of what the error is sorry please have to take my word for it <laughs> Okay, so that but this is this is quite useful. Is uh, and uh, and it's for the JS. The uh, the PHP uh, also gives us the dots and it gives us a definition of the error, but it doesn't have the fix option and it doesn't have the uh, link. Okay, so. The, the PHP had some advantages from the console that you, that the JS didn't have, and when we come to the editor, it's the other way around. And the the style is again. Just remember that we fixed this, but there's still one error. Okay. Again, it gives us a definition, an explanation of what the error is, and then there's no fix button, but there is a, a link. Here, well, you see that at the end, a link that will give us more information about this error. Okay, so, uh, and here at the bottom as well, there's more explanations about the line number and all of that. So basically, that's uh, the tools that you could. Uh, I've lost the internet connection and I don't have the slides now. Don't worry, I've got them here. Okay, so um, if you wanted to install all of those things for the console, you find instructions. So these are this is what I've used: the PHP code sniffer, ESLint, and Styling, and instructions. Uh, it takes quite a while, so I've written them on a blog post that you can find online. Um, if you want to add them to your editor, we've got you can. Um, use um, 
you can set the configuration for your editor and then and then install some of these packages. These are the ones I've installed for Atom. They will be equivalent ones for for your editor. This one I haven't demonstrated is to uh, help you comments, add comments to the functions and the files. And then the instructions, there's a really good blog by Gabor that explains how to install them in Sublime and Visual Studio. For other editors, you'll find them in the GitHub, um, coding standards GitHub wiki. Right, so, and obviously after this, the next logical step would be to add them to, to task runners or continuous integration. But that would be another talk altogether. In the meantime, you can start using what I've shown you, and you will gain a lot. But basically, what I've found is this is like having an out of the box code review. It's just having it's having an extra help to say, okay, this is okay, but you could do better by doing this. And by what I found is that by using the coding standards, I've become more conscious of what I write, and I, it's making my code better, and that hopefully will help me get into more interesting projects than um, what I'm doing at the moment, because I'll be a better developer. And also, it will help uh, become future-proof. Okay. What, what do I mean by future-proof? Um, I don't know if you've heard of Tide. It's this new team for the, um, the community, WordPress uh, community, or the WordPress, um, the Make WordPress um, group called Tide. And basically, what they do is the the objective is to check every single plugin and theme in the repository against the coding standards. That means that. Here's an example. At the moment, they just give you if it's compatible with your current version of PHP, but they also give a score against how that, for that, the, the quality of the code for that plugin. So if you're thinking of perhaps one day publishing a theme or a plugin in, uh, to the repository, then this would be quite useful if you're already using the WordPress coding standards. And uh, that's it, that's all I've got. So I would uh, encourage everyone to uh, give it a go if you don't already. Thank you. So well done on doing that through construction noise, flaky Wi Fi, and the dark capture. <laughs> so, has anyone got any questions for Carmen? Tell you mentioned the WordPress PHP coding standards. I know there are several others out there. Is there any in particular you think that would be that you would recommend or would be interesting to look at? The code, the WordPress coding standards, the PHP. Mm. Uh, like an example of what? Sorry, um, I don't understand. For example, I know there is. I mean, there's the PHP coding standard yes. I know of, and I know there's a handful of others in the WordPress one. I'm not sure what the difference is between the ones that come with it, uh, and I know that other people have built their own coding standards. Yes, I know you can adapt them. Um, I just installed the default. I think the default WordPress includes the BAP and the core WordPress core standards altogether, don't they? Um, it does have an old VIP thing, but we're like, yeah. don't, don't use that. It's yeah. okay. on its way out. Okay. But I know there are some other ones. There's yes. like WordPress Extra and stuff. In yes, the I've just one. I just use the general one. And I think the general one includes all of them, I think. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? Mark? Uh, two part question. So, since you've installed it and started using common standards, do you find you get less red dots all over your code? Uh, <laughs> Yes, yes, but uh, what I'm doing as well when I have time is go through my old code, yeah. and that uh, actually takes me a long time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You load up an old file and stuff like that. There's a lot of stuff, yeah. So, and the, the second part of the question is that do you know of any way in which you can stop it showing those red dots until you are ready to sort of say, please now do your review because uh, I've finished? You can use the comments 
you can add the P for the PHP, this comment at the top that says PHP CS disable at the top and then enable at the end and or just to disable at the top and it's not going to read the file. And then when you're ready to have it checked, just remove that comment. That's it. Um, to that, you can also have it just do, run it whenever you're safe. So okay. it doesn't show the red dots, it just fixes your errors whenever okay. you're safe. And question, is it true that you run the WordPress meetup in Glasgow? Yes, but <laughs> you know that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes? How do you deal with minifying code? I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, how do you tell the clients that you're just not going to do it? Yeah, it I, the, the most of my clients are quite small, right. so you know we're not at that stage yet. So that's partly part of the the idea that if I get better at things like this, then I can take on bigger projects. So yeah. Um. You mentioned using continuous integration yes. and things like Travis with these. Do you have any examples or resources of how am I might think I was going to do those things? No. But maybe in next talk. I'll be <laughs> yeah. Yeah. More questions, please. No? Thank you. Thank you, Carmen.